reminder to everybody, we are now live on YouTube. And we will commence in one minute at 10 o'clock with the formal Harbours Committee. Good morning, everybody. It's the 16th of June, 10 o'clock, and it's now the Dorset Council Harbours Committee. We are live on YouTube and we have an agenda to work through, but I would now like to make a statement about virtual committee meetings. At the annual meeting of council on the 4th of May, 2021, it was agreed that all council meetings that are not executive in nature will continue to be held virtually from the 7th of May until such time as social distancing requirements are removed. That it currently is the 19th of July. Whenever a decision is required, committee members will express a minded to decision in respect of recommendations set out in officer reports with decisions being taken under officer delegated authority in the light of minded two decisions expressed by members in the virtual meetings. John Selgren, the corporate director of place, has joined the meeting to fulfill this role as appropriate. Today, there is only one item for decision. The other recommendations are for noting. The item for decision is item 12 on the agenda, the renewal of Weymouth Gig Rowing Club lease. Oh, I'd now like to do a roll call of members and if we have several new <coughs> um, guests present today, so perhaps if you could introduce yourselves, I'll run down the list. My name is Mark Roberts, Councillor Mark Roberts. I chair the Harbours Committee and represent the Chesil Bank Ward for Dorset Council. Um, Rob Hughes, our Vice Chairman, I think is struggling to join he sends his apologies if he's not able to log on. He's in the far northwest of Wales, and I'm not sure that technology has reached Anglesey yet. Councillor David Gray. Uh, yes, good morning, everybody. Councillor David Gray, uh, Ward Councillor for Radipole and member of the Harps Committee. Thank you. Councillor Louis O'Leary. Uh, good morning, Chairman. Councillor Louis O'Leary. Councillor for Littlemore and Preston and a member of the Harbour Committee. Thank you. Councillor Mary Penfold. Good morning, everyone. Councillor Mary Penfold, I represent the Yetminster Ward and member of the Harvest Committee. And Councillor Sarah Williams. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everybody. Member for Councillor for Bridport Ward and member of the Harvest Committee. And our independent members, Jim Clark. I haven't seen if Jim's with us yet. Maybe come back to Jim. Um, Lee Hardy. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Lee Hardy, I'm the cooperative member of, uh, on the committee based in East Dorset. Thank you. And William Elwood, Will. Morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, Will or William Elwood, um, cooperative member on the Harbours Committee, uh, live just outside Weymouth and um, work within the marine industry. Thank you. Thank you. And we welcome today our three chairs of our Harbour Consultative Committees. Um, we have met the chair of Weymouth, that's Andy Sargent before. So Andy, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. I'm Andy Sargent. I'm the chair of the Weymouth uh, Harbour Consultation Group. Um, live and work in Weymouth and uh, work for the r and Alive. Thank you. Thank you. And we welcome for the first time it's Chris Turner from Lyme Regis. Good morning, Chris Turner, Lyme Regis Harbour Consultative Group, group Chairman. I'm also a member of the RWA Committee and uh, I, I tend to work in Lyme Regis and Portland. Thank you. And Simon Miles. 
You're on mute, Simon. Sorry, folks. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me along. Um, my name's Simon Miles. Uh, happy to be addressed as Milo. Uh, I am a commercial charter skipper and RYA instructor based in West Bay Harbour and uh, here as the chairman of the West Bay Harbour Consultative Group. Thank you. And welcome our cabinet member for place, Councillor Ray Bryan. Yes, good morning, everybody. I'm Councillor Ray Bryan. I hold the portfolio uh, for highways, travel and the environment, which includes harbours. And Councillor Knock Lacey Clark, lead member. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, Councillor Knock Lacey Clark, uh, and I'm here as lead member of Lee Ray Bryan with a special interest in port in our harbours. And today we are welcoming the following officers who are supporting us. Um, John Selgren, Executive Director of PLACE. Good morning, Chairman. And uh, I shall fulfil that role that you've requested of me. That's why I'm present this morning and uh, very pleased to be with you. And uh, great opportunity to be with uh, the Harbour Committee this morning and uh, standing by when you come to that item you described earlier. Thank you. I think it might be your first Harbours Committee, isn't it? Uh, embarrassing enough, Chairman, it is. Uh, but uh, there's a first time for everything. And genuinely, I'm very pleased to be with you this morning. So uh, looking forward to your uh, debate. Thank you. Karen Punchard. Yes, good morning, um, Chairman. I'm Karen Punchard, Corporate Director for Place Services, um, responsible for harbours and a range of other place-based services. Thank you. Paul Ackrell. Good morning, Chairman. Paul Ackrell. I'm the Finance Representative for the Place Directorate. Thank, Thank you. you. And our Harbour Masters, Jamie Joyce. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, all members. Jamie Joyce, Harbour Master for Weymouth. And James Radcliffe. Good morning, everyone. James Radcliffe, Harbour Master for Bridport and Lyme Regis Harbours. Thank you. And Matthew Penny, Matt. Morning, Chair. Morning, all. Yeah, Matthew Penny, Lead Manager for Flood and Coastal Erosion Risk Management at the Council. Thank you. And Claire Connolly. Uh, morning, everyone. I'm um, yep, Claire Connolly, the Finance and Admin Manager for Weymouth Harbour. And Lara Oltree. Good morning, everybody. I am a solicitor with Dorset Council. Thank you. And Denise Hunt, our Democratic Services Officer. Morning. Yes, I'm. my name's Denise and I'm the Democratic Services Officer supporting the committee. Thank you, Denise. And do we have any apologies, please? Um, Chairman, the only one that I've received is from Councillor Rob Hughes. Uh, and from um, Ken Buchan. Yes, the Officer Ken Buchan, yes. And Officer Ken Buchan, yes. Um, just a note about minutes. Um, the minutes of the last meeting are not included on the agenda as they cannot be approved as the committee is sitting informally. So we move on to item two. Do any members of the committee have a declaration of interest? I would like to um, have it noted, please, Denise, that I am now a, a, a mooring holder at West Bay Harbour. So I would declare that interest. Oh, good morning, John Morgan. I omitted you from the list. I'm terribly sorry. I was waiting my turn just to introduce, yes, uh, John Morgan, Chart Surveyor and Development Manager. I, I do apologise, no, but it's okay. you're it's very okay. welcome, John. Patient. Thank I you. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> and we now go on to item three, public participation. Public speaking has been suspended for virtual committee meetings and public participation is being dealt with through written submissions only. So I do believe we have one written submission, which I think will be read out by Karen Punchard. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's going to be read out by Denise and I'm going to respond. Thank uh, you. I beg your pardon. It's the other way around. Yes. Um, this is a question received um, from Susan Boyd. 
Last week, temporary road closures were put in place affecting Weymouth Town Bridge and Custom House Quay. These closures were sprung upon harbour users with virtually no notice. The public notices posted by Dorset Council Traffic Team on the Dorset Council Roadworks and Road Closures webpage a few days in advance is simply not adequate. And when these road closures also potentially impact quayside operations and vessel movements. Ms Punchard, what measures have you put in place with your colleagues in place services to ensure that this situation does not arise again and the needs of harbour users are considered seriously? It is unacceptable to have these decisions thrust upon harbour users with zero dialogue beforehand. That concludes the question. Thank you, Denise. And the Karen, could you read out the answer, please? The response. Yeah, of course. Um, regarding last week's temporary road closures on Sunday, the 13th of June, one was related to the live outside screening of a football match at Custom House Quay and the other related to the Weymouth Half Marathon. Whilst the road closure application for the football screening had been made some weeks beforehand, the application to the Safety Advisory Group, or SAG, for consideration of the event was not made until late in May. This led to a delay in the road closure decision on this occasion. The second event, the Weymouth Half Marathon, was also applied for in May. Moving forward, a protocol has been developed that will ensure that Weymouth Harbour staff are fully involved at the time of making an application for an event or road closure so they can advise on the implications of these events on harbour commercial operations and harbour customers. This will allow time to balance the requirements of stakeholders and provide the SAG with the relevant updated information to fully consider the impact of these events when planned to take place at the harbour side. Once agreed, this information will be disseminated via the normal communication channels to harbour operators and users, including the Weymouth Harbour website and direct emailing to all harbour customers affected by the road closures at the earliest opportunity. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And could you confirm that this would apply to all three harbours, the, 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 the protocol that's been developed? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I don't believe there are any further submissions, Denise? No, Chairman, that was the, the single submission this time. Right, we now move on to the Chairman's report. Um, firstly, I'd like to start off by um, a, a statement about the strategy, the harbour strategy that is being developed. And steady progress is being made on the harbour strategy and the strategic goals have been agreed by the working group following feedback from the harbour consultative groups and key stakeholders. Work on the draft is almost complete and will be circulated to the working group shortly. However, we are of the opinion that more work is required before the draft is ready, particularly for public consultation, and it is proposed that the consideration of the draft strategy is postponed until the next Harbours Committee in September. This will allow more time for the working group and the Harbour Committee to review and comment on the draft to ensure everyone's views are incorporated. It will provide further opportunity to gain views from the Weymouth and the newly established Bridport and Lyme Regis Harbour Consultative Group members and those they represent, and will allow additional work with the Harbour Masters and their teams to look at an action plan to accompany the draft. This will make the outcomes of the draft strategy more tangible when it sits alongside an action plan of how each element will be implemented and will give the harbour staff more ownership of the strategy as they will have a central role in its implementation. The next step is to circulate the draft strategy to the working group for initial feedback and then to other committee members. At the same time, development will start on the action plan which will sit alongside the strategy and then this will be brought to the September meeting for approval for public consultation. So that's a, an update on the harbour strategy. Secondly, I'd like to just mention 
that we will shortly be starting the recruitment process for two new independent members for the Harbours Committee. The, currently, there is one vacancy due to the resignation earlier in the year of Steve Pittman. And in September, Jim Clark will have completed his maximum term and sadly will be standing down. Um, we thought it was sensible to advertise and recruit for both posts at the same time. Uh, just an update on that. And then I'd just like to mention that last Saturday, I took part in a multi-agency approach to advise and educate vessel owners on safety and marine regulations at Weymouth Harbour. We were welcomed by the Harbour Master there. <coughs> And that was two members of the MMO, the Marine Management Organization, two members of the Coast Guards, a member of the Marine Police and a representative of the Wildlife Police Section. Um, one of the officers from the Southern IFCA, that's the fisheries and the RNLI. And it was a, a very valuable and timely operation. And it set the standard for, a, we hope for a safe summer season for our harbour users. Right, that completes my report. Item five, unless there's any questions on that from committee members, we'll move on to the item five, which is the Harbour Consultative Group Minutes. And we'll ask Andy Sargent, the Weymouth Chair, to present or comment on their minutes. The minutes are, of course, in the agenda pack. And I hope you've all had a chance to look at those. Some very full and good minutes of some very good meetings. So over to you, Andy. Thank you, Chair. Good morning all again. Um, yeah, hopefully you've all had a, a chance to have a look at the minutes, so I won't go through them um, completely. Uh, but if I may, I'd like to highlight some uh, specific points. Uh, the first one, uh, Terry Pady, who's a, who was a long-standing um, member of the community here on the harbour side and an active member of the consultation group for over 30 years has stood down and resigned and we noted our thanks to him um, during the course of the meeting and also he'd offered this uh, continuing um, knowledge if anyone should wish to pick his brains at any time uh, one of the um, members uh, also um, raised problems with the loop car park uh, and the spacing and the lack of, uh, of um, spaces. And it was suggested that perhaps um, 45 degree angled parking in places might give more spaces, um, which Jamie was going to look at and uh, progress on. There was also concerns raised from the fishermen and charter boats on the amount of rubbish along Commercial House Quay in the mornings after the uh, revelers have departed home. Um, this seems to be a continuing problem um, throughout the pandemic. Uh, as regards to myself, um, I was happy to inform everyone that we finally got the arrival of the new Atlantic 85 inshore lifeboat after a long awaited uh, arrival. Uh, training had been completed and the boat has been put operational, so um, we've got a larger inshore lifeboat carrying an extra crew member if we should wish, and it's got a big array of uh, electronic gadgetry to assist in search and rescue. Um, so we look forward to using that over the season. Uh, the Weymouth Sailing Club members with the uh, reduction in the uh, lockdown have laid their boys in the bay and it was highlighted that the, the uh, racing marks were now in the bay um, for boat users, uh, users in the area. Uh, Dorset Police um, were hoping that the 100 days of summer campaign was going to be back this year um, so they would be able to raise their awareness, antisocial behaviour and personal watercrafts in particular. Uh, we also uh, discussed about the restrictions on Trinity Road at the top by the bridge um, with the impeding uh, of access through there with the restricted um, Receptive width in the road. Um, we've been working with highways with that and they've been very uh, accommodating and helpful. Mark was also very kind, uh, went through the purpose, use and limitations of the groups, uh, which are listed there for everyone's um, information. It was just to clarify 
what could be expected of the group and how we functioned and what was the limitations of our, our use. So hopefully um, it highlights to everyone concerned what our purpose is, which I think was very useful and it cleared up a few, uh, few myths along the way. Um, one of the other members also asked, because a lot of the problems we get and a lot of the questions we have uh, refer to highways problems, um, which obviously are outside of the scope of the harbour's decision. So it's suggested whether a member of the highway should attend the meetings, um, which um, I believe Mark was going to raise with the, uh, with the cabinet minister and see if we could work forward there. Uh, Jamie uh, also, um, Harbour Master also sent out uh, and stated about the uh, revised and the implementation of the revised uh, Harbour Revision Order. Um, and we had uh, it also said that um, we they'd be looking at modifying the bylaws of 76 and a working group would be put together for input into the revised bylaws. Um, we had an informal meeting um, between uh, between the last two meetings, which was quite constructive, very short, only about an hours long. Uh, but it gave us a chance of anything that were, had uh, come up during the time um, we could discuss and, and get questions before the next formal meeting, um, which uh, worked quite well. And hopefully we use that in the future. Thank you, Chair. That's, uh, that's the highlights of the minutes. If anyone's got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Andy. And yes, a very comprehensive meeting and set of minutes. And indeed, the informal meeting which I attended with the Weymouth Harbour Master was very useful. And it, I think it's likely that that will continue. Are there any um, queries or questions from any of the committee members to Andy Sargent on those? Um, very full minutes of a very good meeting. If there's none, we'll move to Chris Turner, who's going to present the first set of minutes from the Lyme Regis Harbour Consultative Group. Over to you, Chris. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, sorry, it's a bit of a, a bit of a surprise becoming Chair. I wasn't quite expecting, uh, expecting a bit more of a challenge from some of the members, so. Uh, Apologies uh, in advance. Um, like uh, like Weymouth, parking is a concern, um, as everywhere else on the coast is currently UK. Obviously, not helped by the pandemic, and everyone wanting to stay at home. <clears throat> um, obviously, hopefully, you've read all the minutes here themselves. This was the first meeting, so a few people were missed off. Um, so we're looking at. at um, the gig club joining and the town council who were absent from our last meeting. Um, since our meeting, our slipway works have been completed and the tender racks have all moved. Um, I think members will be glad to hear a protocol for uh, future events as we had um, a Netflix filming yesterday and uh, a few few Harbour users were a bit tense about that, but hopefully that was all smoothed over. Um, lots of uh, Lots of cameramen and vehicles, and uh, yeah, a few people uh, uh, got a little bit stressed about it, but um, there was plenty of space for everyone. Um, I think there's not a huge amount else. We've obviously got uh, the Powerboat Club are looking for a license for personal watercraft, um, which hopefully they're bringing something to the table for our next meeting. Um, the pontoons are now also out. Um, and I think it's just generally tidying up. I actually had a meeting with James briefly yesterday and we, we're going to meet up in a couple of weeks when I, I get back from a, a sailing event. Um, we also have uh, we have the sort of non boating activities, which is the swimming uh, and uh, water polo, which I think has all been put off this year. Um, as it happens, I actually know um, the partners involved in that. Um, one of my personal trainers, so um, I know a little bit about what's going on there. So that's all been cancelled as far as I'm aware. Um, and with the C school, they're waiting for for um, lockdown to ease because they can't run until they're allowed to have two people in the same boat. Um, 
other than that, I think that's that's about it from Lyme Regis, if anyone's got any questions. Thank you very much, Chris. And it's very nice to hear that we're underway with the consultative group. Just for member information, um, Lyme Regis and West Bay won't deliver a, a, a meeting report at each of the harbours meetings. It'll be done twice a year rather than four times a year, as Weymouth does, obviously due to the the size and activity of Lyme Regis and West Bay. I, I did notice, Chris, that the the filming involves slightly older vehicles than we usually have, more in keeping with the cob, I think. I saw a couple of horse-drawn vehicles. Some of us are old enough to remember the left, French lieutenant's woman being filmed here. <laughs> so, yeah. Are there any quest questions from any committee members for Chris Turner? If not, thank you very much, Chris, and we hand straight over to Milo. That's Simon Miles for West Bay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, fairly, fairly brief report from West Bay um, along similar sort of lines to uh, to Chris from Lyme Regis. Um, introductions from uh, Council Roberts, uh, brief overview of the uh, responsibilities and, and purpose of the Consultative Harbour Group, just uh, explaining uh, where we are and, and what is, uh, what, you know, our proposed uh, assistance here. Um, roles were confirmed for uh, non-commercial mooring holders, uh, commercial fishing uh, from the gig club, uh, harbour traders and commercial passenger carrying at the moment. Um, we are looking to extend invites to further groups to hopefully uh, bring some more uh, uh, interest and input to the table, which would uh, which should only hopefully benefit uh, everybody. Uh, substitute representatives were also confirmed. Uh, details, uh, names, and so on are all in the minutes, which uh, I understand were published and available. Uh, again, similarly to uh, Chris in Lyme Regis, uh, somewhat by default, I was uh, elected as chairman. Um, and everybody else sat down and I was remaining standing. So uh, I'm happy to take this role on and hopefully work, um, you know, closely with, with James and uh, and the rest of the committee to, to do what I can to assist. Um, there was an uh, overview of the consultative group and, and what is expected of us. Uh, and we were also informed by Mr Buchanan of the uh, Harbour Revision Order. Uh, we're just waiting for details and updates to come through and be confirmed. And I'm guessing that, she, that they will be available publicly once uh, once those are completed. I'll just confirm with perhaps James could just nod yes or no. Perfect, thank you. Um, it was a fairly brief and quick meeting. Uh, it went through fairly smoothly, uh, not too many questions, uh, reports. There were no reports as such. Um, uh, David from the Gig Club did give us an update of how they are operating at the moment uh, with current uh, COVID regulations and conditions. Um, it was good. It's good to see them back on the water. It's good that, that we are slowly moving back to, uh, quotes, normal harbour life, uh, which I think everyone's looking forward to. Um, there was a report on uh, the harbour finances, which, uh, given last year's situation and restrictions, um, were good. It was it was a, it seemed to be a, a good a good year and uh, you know, not quite as damaging as, as perhaps it, the potential was. Um, similarly to Lyme Regis, uh, due to uh, COVID restrictions, uh, events have been certainly postponed for the foreseeable uh, and then following releases later in July now, uh, hopefully we can maybe do something towards the end of the season and, and perhaps get some public events going and get the, get the community running again in West Bay, which would be great. Uh, that was... Pretty much it. James did give uh, his report. There was a report from James uh, Harbour Master on the uh, situation and position of the harbour, um, which was positive uh, throughout. I think uh, details are all in the in the minutes, uh, which are you know you can read through in your in your own time. Hopefully, uh, for the next meeting, we'll, we can gather reports from uh, from the other representatives, and uh, and there might be a, a little bit more for me to report to to you all. Uh, personally, uh, I'm looking forward to working with the committees and doing what I can to, to help improve uh, 
efficiency and productivity and income for the harbours. I look forward to, to working with you all. If there's anything else I can help with. Thank you very much, Simon. And <clears throat> you're very welcome to the committee. And it, it, it's lovely to hear from both consultative committees. They've been a little while in their setting up, but we're very appreciative of the work you've done, both of you. And are there any questions for Simon from committee members about the West Bay consultative report? If not, I know Simon has to get back to his day job. So thank you very much for giving us the time this morning. Thanks, folks. I'll uh, I'll exit quietly. Thanks. Have a have a good meeting. Thank you. Right, we move on to item six, um, which is the Harbour Master updates. There will be a comfort break a little later, probably around about half past eleven. So please don't worry if you're in need or will be. We will have as usual a break. But we move on now to the first of the Harbour Master updates and welcome Jamie Joyce, the Weymouth Harbour Master. Thank you, Chairman. And once again, good morning to all members. I'll commence with an overview of Weymouth Harbour statistics, which demonstrates a positive picture when compared with the previous four year reporting periods. And highlights of that are that we have let out the highest number of marina berths. The slipway and recreational water activity permits have seen a significant increase in takings, and that's particularly following the introduction of the online payment facility. This is, however, balanced by this period being impacted by COVID regulations, which has restricted the number of visiting vessels to the harbour. Moving on to safe and efficient harbour operations, the online incident and defect management system was hosted on our website at the beginning of the year and to date we have received 68 defect notices and those range from minor defects such as split hose through to misaligned pontoon floats and on average those defects are being resolved within 48 hours. We have also received investigated and resolved 21 incident reports and those range from disabled vessels through to underwater obstructions. Carrying on with the online theme, our online payment and verification system, we have successfully had a successful introduction of the automated payment system for our slipway, leisure permits and trailer parking, and over 106 transactions taking place within the first six weeks of operation. The benefit of this system is the opportunity to verify data tag details for personal watercraft and to date 13 personal watercrafts have been identified as not being registered or having incorrect details and these vessels have been stopped from launching as we have been unable to verify the owner's details. Moving on to our harbour vessels. Following a review of the asset management programme and sea trials on all of our vessels to ensure fitness for purpose of the harbour fleet, we have recently sold three of our vessels, most notably the pilot work vessel Melway. She has gone to Blue Seas Protection Group, who will complete refurbishment on the Isle of Wight, and then she will commence her new role in environmental protection of the marine environment. To ensure the continuity of service provision, we have signed an agreement with Portland Port to provide a pilot vessel on request. And we have also placed an order for a seven metre high field rigid hull inflatable vessel with twin outboards. And whilst we await construction of this vessel, high field have supplied a replacement rigid inflatable vessel as an interim measure. Regarding the multi-agency educational exercise that was run on the 12th of June. I'd like to extend my thanks to the Harbour Board Chairman Mark for attending and the joint operation indeed set the tone and the standard for a safe summer season and I can confirm due to the success of this event more exercises are planned throughout the summer period. Moving to open port duty. 
the current COVID reopening and marine industry in England guidelines have been followed, which allowed self-contained visitor vessels to stay overnight from April the 12th. The second stage of the reopening commenced on the 17th of May and bookings have been increasing, leading to full capacity for visitor berths over the May bank holiday weekend. And we've had strong visitor numbers throughout the last two weeks. Staff training, a number of staff training courses have been conducted through this period, ranging from oil spill command courses right the way through to manual handling. And that's to ensure our harbour staff remain qualified in their duties. Regarding conservancy, the harbour has commissioned a four year analysis of hydrographic surveys in order to understand the changing levels of the harbour over this time period. Four years was chosen as a comparison due to 2016 being the first time a multi beam survey was conducted which gives a near full coverage of the depths and allows for comparing the same data sets, thus giving an accurate comparison. Further analysis of this information will be completed in cons consultation with the engineering team to establish control depths at various locations throughout the harbour and generate a dredging regime to maintain these depths. Moving to environmental duty, an oil spill notification exercise was completed on the 8th of April and all key contacts were updated. The waste management plan has been extended, extend, expanded sorry, through collaboration with Odyssey Recycling to provide a collection service for old nets and hard plastic and that was from May the 13th. We have had some issues with bins on both marinas over the past month with general waste being put into recycling bins and oversized objects being left by the bins, resulting in a refusal to collect the marina waste. The harbour team has had to regularly separate items in the recycling and rubbish bins over this time period, taking up to two hours of time to resolve. To tackle this situation, we have put new signs on all the bins to help customers avoid mistakenly using the wrong bin. We have increased the size of the general waste bins, which will mean on North Quay in the summer, we will double the bin capacity and on Westway Road, we will increase it by 50%. Mixed recycling will also increase by 60% and there'll also be extra glass recycling bins. Moving to bird management, the harbour is collaborating with partners such as Weymouth Town Council to tackle the issue of bird management and has already received good information from Natural England regarding correct bird management practices. And it's hoped that we will soon be able to implement some procedures and I'll brief you on those procedures as soon as they've been confirmed by Natural England. During the last committee meeting, we were asked to investigate sea bin options, and we have held discussions with various suppliers to look for solutions for Weymouth. The equipment is evolving and the price of units is decreasing. However, the current price of the unit delivery and setup is at the moment prohibitive. We will continue to monitor the evolution of these products and advise the committee when we believe there's an appropriate solution for, for Weymouth. Aids to navigation. On the 13th of April, the day mark located at Green Hill was repainted. Regarding pilotage, a pilot or pilotage review of our current directions is currently being undertaken by Marico Marine and Harbour staff to ensure that the directions are fit for purpose. And as previously mentioned, there is an agreement which has been signed with Portland Port to provide on request a pilot vessel to transfer Weymouth pilots. Weymouth regarding weather has fared well throughout this reporting period. The stone pier to the beach steps which were dislodged during easterly winds in mid-February have now been repaired and fixed back at their original location. Moving on to Harbour Works, the Peninsula Development. So the Weymouth Key Regeneration Project, which covers the quayside from number one berth to the ferry steps, is supported 
by 3.8 million from the Coastal Communities Fund. That demolition work is now complete and the construction phase is due to commence. I must extend my thanks to the Harbour Consultative Group members who have been instrumental in providing the contractor with valued insights into the infrastructure required at the Fish Landing Quay to facilitate bay, bait storage, catch storage, ice machines and fish equipment storage areas. And further to that, many thanks to the engineering team who have contracted WSP to ascertain the load ratings of Commercial Berth 1 following the completion of the wall works at this location. This report will provide crane contractors with precise maximum applied pressure and distances from the wall that a variety of cranes can be safely sighted. This will be invaluable to the future aspirations of this area and open up the opportunity to facilitate abnormal loads from vessels. An update on Commercial Road, the lighting and power supply. So as you would be aware, grant was applied for and approved by the European Maritime and Fisheries Fund to improve the safety for commercial operators berthed at this location. Work has been completed by our contractor, ROLAC, and permissions have been signed with the utility company, SSE, and we are awaiting a date from SSE to commence the connection work. Weymouth Sailing Club update. The self-funded proposal to improve the use of the water in front of the sailing club, and that was due to the current piles reaching the end of their working life. Both the MMO and Environmental Agency agreed the project and issued a permit with a restriction that piling work was not to commence before the 19th of April to allow for sea trout smolt to migrate. I can confirm now the contractor Walken have completed this work and as expected, has significantly enhanced and improved the safe access of this facility. As we spoke about the Harbour Revision Order, um, so that authority was given by the Statutory Harbour Authority on the 22nd of February 2018 to submit and prepare a Harbour Revision Order to the MMO with the remit to modernise and consolidate the current legislation relating to harbour operations. That Harbour Revision Order came in to force on the 17th of February and the work has commenced on defining the general directions relating to the current notice to mariners that are in force and following legal advice will be submitted for consultation with our stakeholders. New business for Weymouth. Weymouth Harbour welcomes Griffin Towage who specialise in sea towage of barges, ships, both on routine contracts and emergency towage. Griffin Towage also offers tugs for port operations, emergency rescues, firefighting, supply and crew transfers, standby or guard vessel duties. And also on the 14th of April, six new jet ski Versadocs arrived and were positioned for our customers. Out of the six new jet ski berths, three have been let to annual berth holders and the remaining three will be utilised for weekly hire for visiting jet ski customers. With regards to asset management, Claire will present an overview of the new asset management programme for Weymouth after this. Maritime and local events, as expected, most events were cancelled due to COVID restrictions and national lockdown in this reporting period. And due to continuation of the COVID regulations, we will unfortunately not be in a position to accommodate the arrival of the sailing vessel Golden Horizon in June. Once the regulations are removed, we hope to be in a position to accommodate future visits. Thank you, Chairman. That concludes the Weymouth Harbour report. Thank you, Jamie. It's a very comprehensive report. Are there any questions from members? regret that we can't have the golden horizon that would have been quite an event for weymouth but obviously it the disembarking of passengers cannot be covid within the the social distancing at the harbor so we do understand that uh if there's no more no questions from members we move on to james radcliffe harbour master for west bay and lyme regis who will present reports for both harbors james Thank you, Chair. Good morning. 
So the uh, stats for the the end of season for um, for Bridport was the season tickets and uh, visiting nights were down. Uh, the the shop and the boat repair service was lower compared to the out previous year, and this was mainly down to the COVID situation where the shop remained closed for a big part of the year. The diving compressor has been uh, continued to be well used by commercial divers, although it's seen a reduction in leisure diving. But then again, this is down to the COVID situation. Our moorings at Bridport are near capacity with private moorings at 94% and commercial still at 100%. So the stats for line uh, season tickets we can see um, were actually increased from the previous year, and this was uh, more down to staffing at different times and manning levels at the harbour. Uh, the boat lifters have remained high use, although some mooring holes didn't return to the harbour, given our stats slightly lower than the previous outturn. Private moorings at Lyme. Is, again have increased this year compared to last year and are at 92 percent and commercial are still at 100 percent the harbour works the dredging at both har of harbours is now being complete by royal smalls and the material being used to replenish the beaches at Bridport, the far west beach was replenished and at lyme the sandy beach next to the harbour was uh, replenished Lime Regis, the fisherman's store, we're still uh, in the process with our assets and property uh, working on a formal tender to get some true cost in. There's been an increased cost due to the changes to the plans originally and the rising cost of material. And we're applying for further funding to be able to start this from the fisheries and seafood scheme, which is administered by the MMO on behalf of DEFRA. We're still working with the Blue Marine Foundation to assist and accommodate the fishermen with the cold room and the ice making equipment. The slipway and extensions and repairs have, have now been completed at Lyme Regis. The, so the slipway has been extended to remove the drop that was exposed before. And the raised platform has been built and now accommodates all the tender racks. This allows and has freed up areas where we're going to be used for harbour user parking and has already started to be used and has been very well received by the harbour user over the previous weekend. The shop for Lime, we're still waiting for a formal decision on our application from planning within Dorset Council and we're in the process of chasing that. The works for Bridport. The timber piles, due to contractor delays, were, have been postponed now until the end of the summer season, so we don't have any works going on during the main uh, period. The Divers Air Station, we're working on getting some more quotes in, and we hope to start work building this in the autumn. With the accidents and incidents, uh, report had a PwC launch. They turned up without contact in the harbour office and uh, managed to launch without being seen and then got themselves up in, into trouble and ended up washing up onto the rocks. The uh, PwC was ended up being written off with the damage to it and um, the harbour staff retrieved it alongside with the local rib charter. Lyme Regis had a gig uh, accident. They uh, had a gig turnover, which put all the occupants into the water. The crews were rescued by powder boarders and assisted by lifeboat and coast guards. The cox sustained a head injury, which required admission to hospital. In reviewing procedures with the gig club, uh, improvement on safety has been recommended and it's been agreed with the club that all juniors will wear life jackets and all adults will either wear life jackets or a personal life jacket device like a, um, a bum bag type. So all occupants of the gigs will now be wearing some sort of flotation device. They have returned back to uh, rowing now and uh, are enjoying the season. 
So the events, the power vote event of report went ahead at the end of May, no problems at all, and was well attended. Uh, West Bay Day events have mainly cancelled all their events, except they hope to hold one in September. The RNLI events at report have been cancelled for this year. Lyme Regis, uh, the sailing club, are, ho are still hoping to hold their regatta, but their centenary sail pass has now been postponed. RNLI week is still planning to go ahead. <coughs> uh, that's it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, James. Are there any questions or points from committee members? Yeah, yes, Lee. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a, an observation, if I may, um, to both uh, Jamie and James. Uh, I appreciate that producing these reports, these written reports in particular, takes time and effort. Uh, but I think I've, I've got to say that I thought the reports this time were spot on. Uh, they were comprehensive, concise and easy to read and digest, so well done for that. And I applaud the common format and style that is being used across all, all three harbours. So well done to you for that, thank you. Thank you very much, that's very welcome. And we will note. Are there any questions from any other members for either of our two harbour masters? If not, we have a recommendation to note the reports and because this isn't a decision, we, we don't have to have a decision. So I'll take it that everyone is in agreement unless somebody actually dissents from that. So I'll just wait a second or two. I take it that everybody is happy that we note the Harbour Master updates. We now move on to item seven the Flood and Coastal Erosion Risk Management update from the lead officer, Matt Penny. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, members. Um, yeah, the, the purpose of the paper is to update the committee um, on the engineering activities that are taking place uh, within the, the three harbours and and also in Portland Harbour, where we're carrying out works, which which obviously is not a harbour that we, we manage. Um, so if I start at the top, which is uh, Lyme Regis Harbour, James mentioned that the um, the dredging has been complete for this year, successfully completed, um, which is which is good, and uh, the contract we use continues to be um, you know a, a good partner to work to work with in that respect, and we hope to continue to use them in future. Um, asset inspections for both uh, Lyme and West Bay are scheduled for later this summer and in in the autumn, as is as is normal. Uh, we generally program for this time of year because uh, being the tourist season, our, our larger activities, our larger works activities are, are generally don't take, are not taking place. So we carry out our, our smaller works and our inspections th uh, this time of year. Um, re repairs wise uh, uh, in Lyme Harbour, um, uh, we continue to monitor in the COB uh, and carry out patch repairs. Hopefully within the next two to three years, we'll have the larger scheme, larger repair scheme for the COB. Uh, that's the, uh, the the phase five of the Lyme Regis Environmental Improvement Scheme. Um, that has uh, the consulting engineers that we're working with, we're, we're developing an outline business case, which is a business case that needs to go to both council cabinet and uh, DEFRA to uh, draw down funds for the construction works. Um, uh, that's uh, going to be undertaken the second half of this year. So uh, so we hope to have that completed and, and hopefully uh, signed off by by DEFRA um, uh, in November, December this year. And then we'll progress on to further stakeholder engagement uh, and, and getting the necessary permits and licenses for the construction work, um, which will take place in winter 2022-23. Um, moving on to West Bay, um, uh, the dredging successfully completed and the inspections uh, as per Lyme uh, repairs. Uh, we've had uh, specialist consultants carry out the investigation assessment of the, the eastern basin walls and walkways. Um, we, we've recently re received the report and reviewed it. 
and there are uh, a list, of, uh, quite an extensive list of recommendations that that, that uh, have been put forward, uh, starting with further site investigations, trial pitting and monitoring, etc., um, that we will need to undertake, uh, and the the engineers within the team are are, are taking that forward. Um, so once we have those results, that will then inform the design work and, and obviously then the, the following remedial works that need to take place. Um, so I'll, I'll update committee on that as we progress. Um, turn attention to Weymouth. Uh, again, the inspections uh, scheduled for late summer and autumn. Uh, so we hope to be, uh, Jamie re uh, referenced it, we hope to be working with uh, Jamie going forward with respect to um, sort of dredging activity within the harbour where it's required uh, and uh, engineers within the team are, are working with Jamie to to, to move that forward uh, based upon the data uh, that, that Jamie referenced, the hydrographic data that we need to accumulate uh, and review. Um, the the Weymouth Harbour and Esmaid uh, flooding coastal risk management scheme uh, is is uh, the at the strategic outline case stage. That's the initial round of business cases that need to get put forward to Cabinet and uh, DEFRA and the Environment Agency again. We're approaching Cabinet um, in July, um, or no, this, sorry, sorry, June, uh, and um, we will, um, assuming we get uh, approval from Cabinet to progress, we'll then um, submit it to the Environment Agency in DEFRA to review and hopefully approve. Uh, and then we move on to the next round of business cases. So it's, it's an iterative process of, of several rounds of business cases that we've got to go through. And um, uh, we would move on to that next round with a view to then drawing down the funds for construction um, within a couple of years and hopefully uh, proposed construction start date of in 2024-25. Um, uh, the, the scheme would be a comprehensive scheme of, of wall replacement and raising around Weymouth Harbour, works to the, the, the seafront as well. Uh, and and in and around Western Bridge uh, as well, upstream of Western Bridge regarding the, the flood risk there as well. So um, it's going to be a multi-million pound scheme as is referenced. Uh, and so fingers crossed for the next couple of months and the uh, the approvals that we require for that one. Um, Wall D, Harbour Wall D, uh, which is um, by the peninsula at the, at the eastern end of Custom House, Custom House Key, uh, very much in the in the latter stages of that uh, work. Mm -hmm. It's just minor defects and repairs and, and the lighting that's outstanding. Uh, w w there is a section that needs to be repainted on, on that wall. However, we can't undertake that at the moment because uh, the contractor has to come from Norway to do that. Uh, and obviously COVID restrictions being what they are, that's just not possible mm -hmm. at the moment. So, so the contract will continue until that a minor defect has been um, uh, been have been repaired uh, uh, when COVID restrictions ease. Um, Harbour Wall C, which is uh, slipway or North Parade, um, we've carried out uh, site investigation works. We've uh, finalised the design for it. We are uh, actually in the process of uh, tendering and getting quotes for a contractor for that uh, repair work to the sections either side of the slipway. Um, and um, we hope to carry out that work uh, starting in, in October. So uh, at the moment we're, we're on program for that and uh, we, we should be able to hit that milestone. Um, Woolsey and Nine, I think Jamie, uh, Jamie referenced that in his report. Um, uh, we are uh, inputting into the larger scheme as engineers with respect to the repair works to harbour walls E and 9, which are, again are, are on the peninsula. Um, these walls um, require, require some repair. However, the quotes have recently come back for them to be in excess of the budget for the wall repairs. So we're having to um, discuss that with the contractor, reevaluate our scope uh, and and see if we can fit that to um, go back and get requotes from the subcontractors who are carrying out the work uh, and hopefully be uh, bring them within the rounds of, of, of affordability for the scheme. So um, that's uh, an ongoing process at the moment um, and uh, I'll be able to update you next meeting uh, around that. 
and um, Walls F and G on the peninsula again, um, continuing to collect data, and um, we've also due to receive a structural report from consulting engineers uh, very shortly uh, regarding that, um, and that will help filter into the larger um, flooding coastal risk management scheme, which I've referenced, and um, the order of the walls, etc., that require the replacement. Um, so um, that's uh, bearing in mind the length of those walls uh, and the cost of those walls. Uh, though it's, it's important that we understand their condition in detail um, so that uh, we can program in, in program them in phase one of the scheme at the appropriate time. Uh, Portland Harbour. Uh, the reason including that is is that chair has requested we um in, incorporate the work around the coastline of the harbor so the the northwest shoreline we're carrying out a monitoring study uh we are currently in the process of drawing down the funds for that and procuring a specialist consultant to give us that geotechnical advice that we require um we we'll be installing monitoring equipment um starting uh, in the autumn and um that will then we'll undertake a five-year monitoring study um, with, at the end of it, a, a cliff management strategy, which will help us inform where we go, whether it be continuing monitoring or, or you know, uh, um, capital works or or uh, minor repairs. Um, so um, that will they'll hopefully be in place shortly. Um, and that concludes the uh, the the <coughs> um, paper, Chair. Thank you very much. Very comprehensive. Um, it was very gratifying, courtesy of the harbour master and his rib, to see some of the walls from the water, which that view is much, is, and it was lovely to see the, how good wall two, the masonry, the mm. condition of the masonry was, because that, that could be a massive job if it wasn't in good condition. So it's quite a relief to, to know that that was, is still yeah. up to, working and up to speed in, on in general terms the masonry walls are in better condition than the sheet pile walls and that's just because of the type of material that they are etc and, and uh, um, uh, the longevity of that material um, so uh, that's, that's the general principle of it but yes wall two is, is a long stretch so we wouldn't want to be repairing all of that anytime soon no <laughs> are, there, are there any questions from the committee to matt penny on and congratulations on your new role. We look forward to hearing more about the coast. And also, perhaps at some point, you might give us a little bit of update about the 5G links for the coastal, the, the cliff falls along the coastline, either side around West Bay and Lyme Regis. I, I can do that, definitely. Yeah, the, the, my engineer within the team, Rob Clark, is, is uh, our, our um, contact for the 5G team on that. So I'm happy to give an update to the committee on, on that. Yeah. I, I know it'll be of interest to the committee because it's the, so close to the harbours and could impact on yeah. safety. Yeah, no Thank problem. You. Are there any questions from committee members for Matt Penny? If not, there is a recommendation again that we note the engineering report. And again, I'll, I'll take it that we're all in agreement unless I hear any dissent. Thank you. We'll move on to the item eight, the budget outturn report. And for, for we start with Weymouth Harbour and we'll welcome Jamie Joyce and Claire Connolly for this presentation. Hello. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Claire. Um, so this is the um, report to give you the final outturn for the budget for 2020-21. Um, see, this is reported on regularly throughout the year, and there are no um, no surprises at the end of the year. Um, as expected, our income was down due to COVID restrictions. Um, it's mostly relating to visiting vessels and then the associated mm. income with that, including things like recharges for electricity and laundry, et cetera. Um, but also, you know, events were cancelled this year 
more last year. Um, whilst we remained open to visiting commercial vessels, operationally their programmes were changed, which meant we had fewer visitors. Um, and also the um, trip boats in the harbour, a lot of them were unable to start um, at the beginning of the season. So there are either um, a reduced number or a reduced sort of operating period for those. Um, so, so with that knowledge, we um, needed to make some savings. Um, which we've looked at um, throughout the year. Um, the biggest change was in the asset management plan, where we looked at the whole plan um, and made decisions about certainly what could be delayed for a year um, and to, to review as the year went through. So that made um, you know the most significant saving um, at year end. Um, you know, it's actually 355,000. But there's um, a fairly detailed report that um, affects last, last financial year and future years that's coming up. So I can talk about that in a bit more detail. Um, the positives from last year was that our occupancy rates for the marina berths is much higher than it's been for a number <laughs> of years, which Jamie has already reported on, and also that the um, sale of permits and the slipway um, usage was also much higher than normal. Um, there's one change that hasn't been reported on up to now is that we were also reimbursed some um, from the local government compensation scheme um, for £71,000, and that's for lost sales um, and fees and charges relating to COVID. So that's had a positive impact on the budget. Um, I think that's the main points. We also made some savings on response maintenance, um, which has sort of been a bit of a theme for the last couple of years. So we've now started to build that into all of our future budgets. Um, and it, I guess because we are planning work, therefore our response maintenance is reducing. So that's, you know, a positive impact on that. We've also continued to work um, with our team on rates where certainly some buildings have been demolished or some areas where we've been able to make savings. Um, and so we've had refunds in certain areas around that. Um, yeah, and also towards the end, we made some savings on our insurance costs, um, just looking at our policies and talking to that team, um, and we were able to make some in, um, savings at the year end um, with regards to our insurance. Um, I think the um, appendix uh, gives the full financial picture, which shows um, our favourable position of £406,000, which would be put into our reserves. And our predicted year-end position of the, for the reserves is uh, £1.4 million. Pounds. Um, uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Claire. Um, just a quick one from me. The 71200 did we have to bid for that? And could we have bid... Was that the amount that was decided or was that all that was available? Um, throughout the year, um, we've been able to submit our actual losses. So everything that we felt was a, um, a loss of income because of the COVID impact, we've been able to submit that to the finance team and then they have put that in. Um, so, yeah, it had to be evidenced. Um, but yeah, I, I believe that everything that we put in for, we have um, been successful in getting back. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions from members for Claire about the Weymouth budget outturn? Yes, I think a question from Councillor Gray. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, Claire. Is there a recommended prudent reserve target that we should have for the harbours? Is that in existence? No, I don't think we have. Do you mean have a minimum? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, most councils, you know, the, 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 you know, there's a minimum that you should have. Yeah. Uh, Thirty percent of income, whatever. I just wondered whether there was one for the harbours. No, there isn't. I mean, we have discussed that. I don't know if Jamie wanted to add anything at this point, but we have discussed that internally. Did you want to mention this, Jamie? Yeah, thanks, Councillor. Yeah, 
So with regard to that, um, I think um, when Claire produces the asset management plan, it will make sense of where the reserves are going, how they're being spent and what we need to achieve to keep those operations from moving forward or to keep them moving forward. So, yeah, I think as Claire explains the asset management program, it will become more evident. Yeah, I've got some questions on that, Jamie. I wondered as a result of the Harper revision order, whether there was a minimum level set for uh, prudent reserve, but obviously not. Okay, no. thank you. No, I, um, thank you. That's a very good question, David. And I think as we as the income streams evolve under the Harbour revision order, uh, I think that's something that we may well look at as a committee. But it, it's we're dealing a little bit with some unknowns at the moment, or, or it's not clear what the in, all the income streams will be over the next and that will shortly resolve. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Mary Penfold. Um, thank you, Chair. It's not a question. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for the huge amount of work that's, that's done, and especially, Claire, with the bids that were successful. I'm sure we're all very appreciative of that. Thank you, Mary. Yes, yes, we endorse your <laughs> view. And um, Claire, thanks for all the work you and your team do at Weymouth. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Is no further questions on that. We move over now to James and James Radcliffe and for the Bridport and Lyme Regis budget outturns. Thank you, James. Thank you, Chair. So the outturn for Bridport, the final outturn was uh, 9,891 adverse. And there is the end of uh, year reserve for the uh, Harbour Reserve was 25,000. So the expenditure was 54,000 adverse. Where there was a saving is on the uh, pay cost due to the sh sharing of harbour masters between two harbours. There is an in there's been an increased cost in property and cleaning cost. The outer harbour, which was no longer supported by the Environment Agency, saw a significant increase last year, and the, there was contingency <laughs> funds from Dorset Council for 75,000, but the total figure in the end was 117. There's additional expenditure relating to the contribution made to the designate person from Marico Marine, but the income saw a 44,000 favourable. So the fees and charges were impacted um, by COVID, but there's uh, money claimed was around 20,000. Uh, for Bridport, there won't be any uh, transfer. There wasn't any transfer to reserves for the harbour dredging because it was used within to balance the dredging cost. So for Lyme Regis, the final out term was favourable. And the final end balance for the Harbour Reserve is 109,000. The expenditure is 109,000 adverse. Again, there was savings on the pay for the Harbour Master covering both harbours. Uh, the boat fuel costs were down due to the shortened, shortened season. Uh, the additional cost was the Harbour dredging, which was offset by the uh, government grant funding, which is shown in the um, income below. And so th the income, we had 95,000 in for the funding to offset the dredging. And with an improved tabling of staff has led to effective, more effective collection of harbour dues resulting in the increased returns. For Lyme, we managed to, uh, as well as the 25,000 for the harbour dredging put into reserve, we also managed to put another 12,500 into the reserve pot, making the um, final reserve of the 109,000. That's it for Bridport and Lyme. Is there any questions? Thank you very much, James. I'll just remind members that the reason at the Outer Harbour at West Bay, the Environment Agency used to fund the dredging because it was used for beach replenishment for coastal defences. And with their big £9 million scheme that was finished last year, 
the Environment Agency at the moment don't consider it necessary for the beach replenishment. But I think we're still in discussions with them and we hope maybe to get some contributions for that in future. Yes, uh, Rob, Rob Clark from the Engineers is working on um, schemes with them and um, traceability studies and everything with the material and is in talks with the Environment Agency. Good. I, I noticed at Lyme Regis we had a favourable outturn of one pound, which was <laughs> e excellent accounting there. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any questions from members for James about West Bay and Lyme Regis on the budget outturn? And again, we have a recommendation to note the budget outturn figures for 2020 stroke 21 for all three harbours. And the same procedure, if everybody is happy to note these, I just ask if anybody is wants to dissent from noting these. I think everybody is content with those. Um, it's quarter past 11. I think maybe this would be a, a sensible time to have a, a short break now. So we'll have a, a break and if we return in 10 minutes at 11.25, I think that would suit everybody. Thanks, Mark. So we'll welcome you back in 10 minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. We resume the Dorset Council Harbours Committee with agenda item nine, the budget monitoring report. <clears throat> we start with Weymouth Harbour and we welcome Paul Ackrell to co-present with the Jamie Joyce and Claire Connolly. Hello again. Thank you, Claire. Um, I, uh... So the um, budget monitoring report um, is giving you some information on where the budget stands um, just for the first two months of this year. Um, it's as last year, COVID restrictions will have an impact on our income for visiting yachts. Um, it's actually uh, fair to say that the restrictions are less severe at um, this point in time. So although income will be affected, I think there will be much less of an impact. Um, and other areas last year, like the operating sites and things like that, they've been able to run um, from the beginning of the season. So we won't see any um, changes there. Um, the favourable variances for this year, expecting that um, increased activity at the slipway and personal um, watercraft permits. So the online booking system has certainly um, helped us capture more um, visitors at the slipway and um, more sale of um, personal watercraft port permits. The um, Sorry, I just lost my place. Um, a business opportunity, um, Jamie mentioned the Griffin towage that um, is now located on the peninsula. Um, new business to Weymouth has increased our income um, and also a um, increased number of operating sites for trip boats. Um, again, you know, providing a good service to the town and also um, providing some additional income for us. Um, again, we're going to talk about the asset management plan on the next report, but the review of that for this financial year um, has had a significant impact, and that is where we are looking to make most of our savings this year, um, but we will cover that later on. Um, our reserve balance is, is expected to be £1.4 million. Um, within the report, paragraph six and seven, there was an update from corporate finance, which covers capital approvals and the accounting changes as a result of the HRO. Um, and that is, oh, and I've also included at paragraph four um, a list of projects that we intend to do this year. Um, I think that covers the uh, the Weymouth Harbour budget monitoring and happy to take any questions. Yeah, yes, just briefly, um, I see David Gray, but just the, the biggest item on your list is the maintenance dredging. Um, is, is that trying to deepen to get new berths or is it e existing passage dredging? It is. Um, do you want to answer, Jamie? I mean, it's maintenance dredging. It's not to. Yeah, so uh, yes, Martin, essentially it's maintenance dredging because we're not dredging to a depth greater than in the last 10 years. So it's looking to um, establish a control depth for the engineering team and then we'll dredge to that and maintain that depth um, throughout the year. Will, will that enable us to have slightly larger visiting craft and earn a little extra revenue from having larger vessels in or is it really just to make sure it's safe and yeah it's it's really to look at the conservancy of the harbour to ensure that we maintain those depths um it would be capital dredging if we wanted to go another half a meter deeper which you're correct yeah. then would attract those larger vessels thank you uh councillor david gray uh yes thank you chair uh you, you've, you've 
partly asked my question, um, but I, I just have a bit of a follow up on that. So, and I, I, I have, uh, it's maybe my understanding of this, so pl please be patient with me. Um, it, on page 64, Claire, you've included uh, Lithuanian year projects, one of which is the maintenance dredging at 50,000. And I can see from further on in the document, medium term financial outlook is 50,000 for the next three years and then 25,000 for the for the final two years, making a total of 200,000, which um, marks partly asked a question, which is that's for maintenance of existing uh, debts, therefore maintaining current business. But on uh, my question is on point um, 6.2 on page 65, um, the Weymouth Harbour dredging proposal was for capital dredging and was part of the proposal capital project spanning five years of £200,000 annually. So does 6.3 relate to the 50000 a year or is that a completely separate point? Because one of the questions I asked the last time was around how do we improve business by further dredging and therefore further income? This 50,000 revenue, uh, sorry, 50,000 reserve doesn't satisfy that need. So am I reading 6.3 differently than the 50,000 a year? Sorry, that's a long winded question. Who, who's taking that one? Is that Claire or Jamie? Yeah, the, the, the 50,000 pounds a year. Hang on, I just. Yeah, the, uh, trying to think of the best way to describe it. I think it, in 6.3, it mentions that there was um, a proposal capital project for five years, but the we that's a, a separate item. We are covering maintenance dredging out of our own budget. Yes, I understand yeah. that. So my question then is, where where is the proposal then for a five year project at two hundred thousand pound a year for capital dredging? Because it's mentioned in the report, but it's not in the accounts, and there's no reference to it for future investment. Mm -hmm. I think the um, reference was to the council meeting that um, they agreed the first two hundred thousand for the first year, um, but um, not the second, third, fourth, and fifth year, which is. Um, obviously the the sort of million pounds so what we've alluded to is for um, our establishment and working expense and the cost of maintenance with the 50,000 um, and then separate to that is the capital project looking at deepening the channel the deepening areas are different to the maintenance areas the maintenance areas being at the mouth of the channel uh, and working backwards um, whereas if you're looking at the capital project, it would be looking at the inner harbour area to facilitate, as Mark was saying, the, the deeper vessels. So same question to uh, Karen, I assume. Or, or, um... well, I, I think Karen wants to come in on this, so maybe she'll be able to answer your question more fully, David. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, we, we have established um, a new um, means of considering capital projects um, in, in Dorset Council through the Capital Asset um, Strategy Management Group, and subgroups have been formed. But because the harbour, in particular Weymouth Harbour now with the HRO, has a separate ring-fenced account, then capital bids um, to the harbour reserve will need to come directly through the harbours committee in the future. Now, we haven't devised a template or process within which to do that, because obviously this is this is a new way of um, dealing with the finances. And, you know, maybe Paul, Paul can come in um, on this. But capital works for the harbour will need to be funded by the harbour reserve and in time when the HROs are approved for Bridport and Lyme, similarly there would need to be a harbour reserve that would fund the capital spend um, for e each of those three um, harbours. So you know we, we have got 
templates being developed for main capital projects within Dorset Council. So we'll look to see if we can um, adapt those um, in some way for, um, for Harbour's committee going forward. Thank you. I mean, Paul, I don't know if you want to add to that, please. Thank you, Karen. Paul, do you have anything to complement that? Yes, yes, thank you both. Um, <clears throat> I want, wanted to draw attention to, to Section 7 anyway, really, just, just because it's a, a quite important point of principle. Um, and I just wanted the committee to be clear. Um, obviously, we're applying the rules of the HRO for the first time. We haven't done this before, but the current interpretation from corporate finance and from legal is that the HRO is a, a double-edged sword, really, for harbours. Um, so as, as Karen has said, the, the immediate effect is that harbours are effectively um, excluded, if you like, from the internal council process of bidding for capital. And the HRO effectively says harbours need to fund capital themselves. That said, there is still a further route, which is that in some hypothetical situation where there was a, a, a huge capital uh, liability or, or problem that was foreseeable that just simply couldn't be funded from harbours, there is a direct route then to the council's cabinet committee. Um, obviously, if, if a request was to go through this committee up to cabinet, um, it would be subject to, to quite a bit of scrutiny and challenge and so on, but that route is there. Um, so this is, this is all relatively new. Sorry, it touches on a number of questions. It comes back to Councillor Gray's question. Because this is relatively new, we were in the middle of drawing up a kind of proposal for a five-year plan. Then we've, then we've hit this um, stumbling block. But as Karen says, we're in the process of working out how that's going to work in the future going forward. Hopefully that helps a little. Thank you, Paul. Um, David, did you want to come back? Yes, please. <clears throat> uh, I'm a little disappointed, if I'm honest, Chair, because that's not what it says in point 6.3. What it says in 6.3 is that uh, the difference between what can be supplied from reserves for capital and the total cost of the capital project will be made up from corporate Dorset Council funds. So it implies that the process that Paul and Karen are talking about is already settled, That, i.e. we stated that any capital projects partly funded through the accounts of the harbour will, will, will be made up. It implies that it will be made up. So to say that there isn't a process is a little disappointed, I must say. So I'd like to request that we get to this pretty quickly because in the next 25 years, we're going to have to compete fully with the deeper harbour and we need to get on with this because I've raised it three times now in three separate meetings and we still don't seem to be any further down the track for this. Thank you. I think that's a very valid point, David, and I'm not sure if we can fully answer that today, but I think, Karen, can we um, look forward to either a note to committee members or a, a, a much fuller explanation of how it's going to work at, in the September meeting? Uh, yes, yes, Chairman. We'll make sure we um, include a full update, um, and by September, we 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 should have a process um, in place. Thank you. I, I know the process will become clearer, and it's it's we're on sort of new ground for both the council and the committee, and we also for David, um, some of the projects actually will be funded by external agencies because they relate to defence of the town, even though it's harbour walls. So some of that program will have environment agency funding. So it, it, it's not entirely coming from harbour income. There's going to be a combination in the future, but we need to be able to take advantage of all, all, all the facilities to ensure a safe and increased um, or a better strategy for improving the harbour facilities to increase the income. Yeah, I understand, Chair. I understand. I, I really do, do think that the depth of the harbour is, is different than the harbour walls or any other investment because it's a commercial venture. So we, we are looking at the capital outlay versus what we might get in the next 25 years over deeper, you know, bigger vessels or whatever. So I do think it's different. 
Uh, but it's just that the, the, the update, I think, is slightly misleading in my view. So it needs to be worded better. Thank you for that observation. Thank you. I think, yes, it's a very valid point. Thanks. Are there any other comments on the Weymouth monitoring report? Sorry, Chair. Uh, sorry, Chair. I've got another one, if, that, if that's OK. Yes, of course. Um, can I ask, ask on point 5.1 point on page 65, the £100,000 that's in the uh, regeneration project, wh where we are with that project? I know it's sort of at, at an arm's length from the Harbours Committee, but there is 100000 in the account still for that project. Can I ask Karen for an update on that, that particular project? Please, Karen. Uh, yeah, yes, of, of course, Chairman. Um, if you've been down to um, Weymouth Harbour, you will have seen that a number of the buildings um, have been um, have been um, demolished. So um, works have commenced. The contractors have been appointed. Um, they're going through um, in detail the um, the budget and the detailed plans um, with the engineers at the moment, um, and we are progressing um, in line with the programme on the Harbour Works side of things. The Centre of Excellence um, side of the um, project um, that has stored, we were looking to um, acquire um, a property in the town centre that's fallen through. So we've started a new search um, for sites and property to provide the um, centre of excellence. Um, but generally, good progress um, has been made. We've got the support of MHCLG, so we're hopeful that um, the scheme can be completed um, by the middle of next year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I think that it, it appears from the notes that 100,000 is being put into the regeneration project but it's actually it's the cost of the works that the harbour are doing towards that project um so that's, that's correct military. that's correct chairman as i understand it that's the harbour's contribution to the harbour wall improvements yeah yes yes does that does that answer david your yeah, query just, just one minor point karen which was around given the the, the fall through of the of the current scheme to the center of excellence are we in danger of losing the money or can we get an extension to the to the grants because I know the grant has a time sensitive uh, date on it but we're not in danger of losing that are we? Um, I don't think so at the moment we have um, obviously been in close communication with MHCLG they have already agreed um, an extension um, mainly as a result of, of Covid because most of their um, funded projects have had um, delays um, you know there are delays generally in the construction sector and difficulty in accessing um, contractors and, and some materials that have held up a lot of projects. So um, so they, they, they do um, understand the position. Um, once we have um, agreed and um, settled on um, new sites and premises for the Centre of Excellence, we'll be writing again to MHCLG to provide them with um, with an update. But we are in close communication with them. We have to submit regular um, progress reports to them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. That's reassuring to know both the close contact and that there's no immediate threat to that grant. Thank you, David, again, for a very good point. Um, if that's the questions for Weymouth, I'd like to move on now to the Bridport and Lyme Regis budget monitoring reports from James Radcliffe, the Harbour Master. Thanks, Chair. So the monitoring for Bridport, at this early stage, we're predicting a saving of 12,000, and this is uh, down to the saving in pay cost. The income at the moment, there's no predicted variances. And then the uh, we still plan to move 25k to the Harbour Reserve. So for Lyme Regis, again, there's a saving of 12,000 for the same reason of saving in um, pay cost. And then uh, with the income, there's no predicted variances at the moment. 
but there won't be any uh, transfer to reserve for the to the harbour reserve because that's been used already for the um, dredging for this year at Lyme. Thank you. Have any questions? Yes. Uh, are there any questions for James from any members? I think, James, we perhaps ought to just mention we have a rather shiny new piece of yellow equipment down at West Bay that seems to be working properly. Yeah, we have a new uh, JCB telehandler that's um, been purchased and delivered last week. And, and fully kitted out, ready to do the work, isn't it, with the right equipment on it? Yes, ready. Yeah, it's all ready to go. Good. Um, any other questions or points? If not, th thank you very much, James, and to Paul, Claire and Jamie. There is a recommendation. Again, it's to note the budget monitoring figures for 2020-21 and the updates on capital approvals and accounting changes as a result of the Weymouth Harbour revision order. And again, I'll ask if everyone is content to note this recommendation. If there's any dissent, please could you voice it now? Good, I take that all in agreement. We move on to item 10. This is a review of the Weymouth Asset Management Plan and impact on future finances. And again, it's it's Jamie Joyce with Claire Connolly, or Claire is actually presenting, I think. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so the asset management plan um, has was set up initially um, a number of years ago, um, and it looked at sort of 25 years um, of our assets, and we allocated a sum each year um, to set aside um, to pay for the re replacement costs of those assets. Um, the sort of financial situation in recent years, um, which was you know largely due to Condor ferries leaving, has meant that we haven't been able to set aside those funds on an annual basis. And we had to rethink how we were going to plan the replacement of our assets. Um, and we, because it was such a big commitment, financial commitment each year, we were always looking to um, draw funds from our reserves to balance the budget, which was not um, sustainable. Um, so with that in mind, we had to make some changes um, with a plan to work towards um, an operationally balanced budget and to have a programme of works that was uh, more achievable each year um, and more affordable. So we have had a look at what we have, um, what we need um, to confirm whether things are fit for purpose and to review the sort of expected lifetime of each asset. Um, so some of our assets have been sold, uh, which has generated income and reduced our ongoing servicing costs and any future replacement costs. We have extended the expected replacement dates of some of our assets. And we've also set up a routine maintenance budget that we allocate each year to carry out sort of either annual repairs or surveys that will um, save us having a large commitment to replace in one year and you know, chip away at things on a year by year basis. And we've also looked towards funding some of those uh, more significant projects out of our reserves. So in paragraph 8.1, let's go to up my paper. On eBay, you can get up to 70% of big fashion brands with their brands. <laughs> Give me one hour. <laughs> It's it, sorry, in paragraph 8.3, not 8.1. Um, there are two tables there. So table one shows a the five-year cost of what was originally going to be in our asset replacement plan. And table two shows what we expect it to be now. So we've got our uh, list of in-year projects and our list of routine maintenance. Um, so as you can see from that, um, there are savings each year and 
all of those items are expected to be um, funded from the um, operational budget. Um, so not only does that result in savings each year, it also means that we will expect to return a surplus. Um, so this is obviously providing a much better financial picture. Um, however, of course, there's still ongoing pressure on the budget. You know, we're achieving a balanced budget. We are um, funding our replacement plan, but we need to then use our reserves to fund the bigger items. So if you look um, on table three, um, that's where we're looking to fund our pontoon replacement and the maintenance dredging that was talked about earlier. Um, so, if, you know, the five year programme for that, if we look at our current predicted balance of the reserves of 1.4 million, we've got um, future costs of 962,000 for replacement pontoons, 200,000 pounds for uh, dredging. So you can see that our reserves are going to be used um, within those five years and you sort of generally leaving a relatively small balance each year. Um, so, you know, what we would like to say is that the budget, whilst it's an improving picture, it's still, you know, there is still a lot of pressure on the budget. Um, we are setting this out to pretty much um, maintain the status quo. Um, it's, you know, replacing a pontoon with a pontoon. Um, it's doing maintenance dredging. So as Councillor Gray sort of referred to earlier, it's not necessarily at this point in time giving us the capability to, you know, to look to significant improvements or developments. Um, and that's something that we need to continue to work with the finance team and other colleagues across the authority to look at how we can you know, do things differently um, and enable us to um, improve and develop in the future. But this is just to say that we've covered our, you know, our, our current operations as a kind of status quo, really. Thank you, Claire. Yes. I think one of the points I was going to make was that obviously the pontoon replacement is like for like and any reconfiguration with possibility of new or different pontoons would come as a capital item. I think Councillor David Gray has got a question again. Yeah, uh, Claire, um, that, that's the best bit of the report for me. So well done for that. It, 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 it really does. Uh, you know, for any layperson looking at that report, um, it does it does lay out the challenge for the next five years, particularly in medium term financial planning. It does definitely do that. And I sort of make two points, really, not really a question, Chair. Um, one is I go back to my original uh, earlier point about um, a prudent level of reserves. We need to uh, we need to solve that question before we get to capital investment of nearly 700,000 in pontoons because we wouldn't want to uh, have a, a below uh, a below uh, minimum uh, reserve. And secondly, I think, uh, I don't know whether we do do this, but um, uh, some sort of medium term fees and costs all the way out so that we can look to play the tunes, if you like, on how much income we get in versus we need to do that work because 690 some odd thousand in one year is, is a lot and uh, um, again uh, relating to my earlier point from Karen we need to we need to understand uh, whether we're going to fully fund that or whether that falls into the category of Dorset Council um, corporate reserves assisting us with the capital investment so I think ahead of those big decisions I really found it interesting to read um, we, we do need to solve those questions thank you thank you well done Claire thank you Thank you. That's a very, again, a very valid point. And, and you will see when we come up to the forward plan, David, that we will be looking at the fee structure in the December meeting. And so it's something we will need to bear in mind. And also some of the other income streams that will be coming into the harbour should be clearer by then. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Claire? Again, thank you for a very comprehensive and very well laid out report, Claire. Thank you. Very, 
easy to understand. Good, thank you very much. Um, we move now to item, agenda item 11, the forward plan. On your agenda, it, it does say Ken Buchan, the would be presenting the head of environment and wellbeing, but Ken is on annual leave. So um, we're asking Karen Punchard to present, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so I'll just draw your attention um, to the upcoming items that um, Councillor Roberts made reference to in his earlier statement. So this is primarily around the Harbour's um, strategy. So there'll be a draft strategy um, coming to Harbour's committee um, at the end of um, September. Um, and as um, the chairman pointed out, that will then be um, going out um, for consultation and um, a, a final um, consideration following public consultation um, in December um, 2021. Um, we also then have the budget related um, reports. So again, the scale of charges that we've just been talking about, um, specifically for next year, 22-23, and the um, budget request, um, they will also be considered in December. And one still to be programmed, the business plans for the three harbours, again, really following on from the approval of the harbour strategy, um, which will set the context within which those business plans um, can be further developed. Um, that's all um, I need to say in introduction. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Karen. Are there any um, questions or points or comments from committee, please, on the forward plan? I take it that everybody is, again, content with that. And the recommendation, therefore, is the same, that we note the forward plan. So if members are content to note it, if we, if I have silence, I'll assume there's no dissent. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, we move forward to agenda item 12, urgent business. There is no urgent business. There are no items recorded for urgent business. So. We move to agenda item 13, renewal of the Weymouth Rowing Club lease, which John Morgan is going to present. If members are reminded that if any discussion involving fees and costs is desired, we will have to move into a separate exempt meeting, and which would need a proposal and a seconder and a vote on that. And We'll see whether that need arises, but I'll now ask John to present the report for the renewal of the Weymouth Rowing Club lease. Thank you, John. Thank you, Chairman, committee members. The Weymouth Rowing Club lease expired 24th of March 2017. The recommendation is that the committee are minded to approve and authorise the grant to the Weymouth Rowing Club CIO a lease for 25 years from 25th of March 2020. Granting a new lease is in accordance with the Dorset Council full council decision on 16th of February 2021 and to follow on from Weymouth Revision Order 2021 which is now in force. The draft terms are agreed with the rowing club on a subject to contract basis. The permitted use is boat storage and workshop facilities. The draft lease allows for pontoons, moorings, some which is subject to the formal approval of the Marine Management Organization. And I believe Jamie touched on approvals earlier. The grass area in front of the clubhouse is to be used in common with others. There are provisions for the town slipway and for landlords access. 
And basically, that is the proposal recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, John. And I know members will remember that we've granted temporary leases because of the delay in achieving the harbour revision order. And now that is through and a, a legal document, we can now grant this lease. Any questions from members on this agenda item? There don't appear to be any, and I, I know it's been worked up, and I think all parties are content with this recommendation, aren't they, John? It's yes it's not a contentious agreement at all that's correct we've had lengthy discussions i mean quite lengthy over a number of years uh, this follows on from the sailing club which was agreed some years ago uh, it's it's a sort of an area that's long established for that use and we've looked many times at the you know where it sits within the harbour and the various bits and pieces it all works Thank you for that clarification. Uh, it, if there are no comments or questions from members, the recommendation is that the committee would be minded to approve and authorise the grant to the Weymouth Rowing Club CIO of a lease for a period of 25 years from the 25th of March 2020 on the terms outlined in the report and appendices and recommends that the executive director of place takes the decision accordingly. So, members, are we content to make the minded recommendation and hand over to the Executive Director of Place, John Selgreen? Would anyone like to dissent from this? I think that's the easiest way. If anyone wants to dissent or abstain, could they indicate now, please? I take it that all are in favour of this recommendation. Thank you. John, would you like to comment on this? Chairman, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and I confirm that I've uh, seen the report that has been put before the committee this morning. Um, I've heard the presentation given by uh, John Morgan and indeed the questions that you've asked of him uh, concerning the wider support that report has received. Further, I've uh, heard you call uh, four members of the committee to comment on their approval or otherwise to the report. I'm noting that there are no dissensions from recommendation as you have described it. And therefore, I'm minded to take on to myself uh, to take that decision on behalf of the committee, having heard uh, your de deliberations of the matter this morning. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. So we will uh, expect that decision process now to be taken forwards. Thank you, Chairman. I will do just that. Thank you. That now, I think, completes the agenda. And unless members have got any other comments, I think that actually concludes the meeting. So I'd like to thank you all very much indeed for a very good and informative meeting and with lots of contributions. And thank you all very much. I think that concludes the meeting. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Well, well done, meeting as always. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Chair. Thank you all. Thank you.